here now. Here we, we are go. here. Hi, with Steve Struggle. Okay, <clears throat> we were just talking about <clears throat> how uh, I started the project uh, with uh, buying a, a small building for a cultural center that was uh, half paid for by the savings my mother had from the compensations, the the uh, compensation payments made by Germany to my mother as a refugee of $500 a month from the Nazis to compensate for the destruction of like more than 90% of my maternal and paternal families. 500 bucks. Okay. But Black Nation got ripped off entirely. You know, the 40, 40 acres and a mule, you know, like, uh, as you were telling me, was revoked, was reversed. I don't know how you can reverse a law. It, when, when, it, when it comes, when it comes to the Native people, when it comes to the Black people, when it comes to the, J the Japanese internment, when it comes to the Chinese Exclusion mm -hmm. Act, they do whatever the hell they want to do. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, and the excuses come afterwards. Yeah, I know. Always, they always come afterwards. So I, I, I feel that you were, you were blessed. Your family was blessed as a result of getting reparations money. That was a righteous thing to happen. And for all the people who said it for the black people else so long ago, excuse my language. Fuck you. Yeah. No. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. That was something that's kept the black nation oppressed. The descendants never got anything. Mm -hmm. ne nothing. Mm -hmm. Those of you that got something right after the Civil War, when when uh Lincoln was assassinated, um Andrew Johnson on April 15, 1865. He rescinded Field Order 15 and returned to Confederates the 400,000 acres of land that, that had been given to Black people. Uh -huh. Wow. So it never was, because they hated, this is the, and when everybody talks about the history of the South and my Southern heritage, that means you, if, you, if you admire that Southern heritage, then you admire this kind of action. Actually, you have to admire the murder of Lincoln. Because Lincoln was killed by a Confederate. People don't know this. So I was thinking about it one day. I said, how could Lincoln have been murdered? I said, thanks, Steve. Think. He's the president of the United States. So he has top security. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay. How does somebody sneak in and shoot him in the back? It, he's watching a, watching a play. The only way that happens is if that person was let in. Mm -hmm. I, I I just figured it out myself. I just had a dog one day. And I was talking to a teacher one day who teaches English and teaches history. He said, "Yeah, there's been a special on 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 um, PBS and Ken Burns and someone done a special that's showing it was it was conspiracy." So you know, mm -hmm. this this Janala writes to black people. The third class life, the black people have always lived in this country. I don't care if you're middle class, you're a movie star, I don't care if you're a billionaire. The majority of black, the black masses live a third class in life, not second class life, a third class life. They've even had they even had uh situations where people like Serena Williams and other black women who are wealthy have, have almost lost their children uh, during during childbirth. How? Because they're, they were given shitty treatment by the hospitals. That's why mm -hmm. they treat them like a nigg when they're in the hospital. So I, I, I was just saying, I'm, I'm glad that your, much your mom got that money. Imagine if that had been the safe, if that had been a situation for all the slaves and all their descendants. Mm -hmm. it, 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 it would be a different situation now. Mm -hmm. but, but that's what's so difficult, even to imagine what it would be like, because it. Because it because it wasn't, it's hard to imagine what it would have been like. That's all. Mm. Oh, it makes a big difference, you know. And if the law, if that law could be unmade, then it could be made again, you know. So, right. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. It reminds me of the uh, assassination of Lincoln and the conspiracy around. Uh, reminds me of the assassination of Yitzhak Rabin, who had signed the Oslo Agreement with Arafat, and shook his hand. 
<clears throat> and then he got wiped out. And uh, sure did. the the Zionists, you know, claim <clears throat> that that was justified because the 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 uh, the law to uh, accept the Oslo agreements, you know, for a two state solution, was passed in the uh, Israeli Parliament, you know, the Knesset, with the support of the Arab. Palestinian parties only. And that's how they got a majority for that motion. Otherwise, it wouldn't have passed. And so that's why the Israelis don't consider it to be, you know, legal because it wasn't the majority of the Jewish Zionist parties. <laughs> you know, like totally corrupt, you know, and they'll use any excuse, you know. You see how they are, man. Yeah. I mean, the bullying, the the way they want to bend the rules always to get ahead. Yeah. God, it's so it's so it's actually this it's actually depressing. Uh. When it comes to um when it comes to the Zionists, when it comes to the Israelis who um support and 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 promote their government's position and policies and agenda, there's nothing they won't do to, to win. Uh -huh. And that's that says something about who, who they are and what they represent as a mm -hmm. cause in a nation. Mm -hmm. It's not good. It's not good. There's nobody that they won't kill. There's no lie that they won't spread. There's no injustice, no injustice that they will not commit. Mm -hmm. Not because they're Jews, no. Because mm -hmm. what their, their cause is one of dishonor, of disrespect, of mm -hmm. oppression, the cause of the, of the Israeli state. Mm -hmm. It's not a cause for humanity. I'm sorry, it just isn't. If, really? if, if, if any doubts, look at what's happened since October 7th. Yeah, they replaced the... Uh, the but people, what they, this real state won't do. Yeah. There's nothing they yeah. won't do. Well, what haven't they done? This is the yeah, yeah. white supremacy, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, and, you know... Um, and that's why they so, wow, I didn't I, I had no idea that controversy around the around uh, the Oslo Accord. I didn't know uh -huh. that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh this mentality of white supremacy, you know, can justify anything, anything oh, at all. It does. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It justifies um, anything. And people and people um people tend to forget it. People tend to forget that it justifies any and everything. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. once once it's justified, oh well, life goes on, right? Mm -hmm. That means it's supposed to go. It's supposed to just go on, right? Mm -hmm. Don't 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 worry about it. That was a long time ago. Oh, don't worry about it. You know, we can, yeah. we we can't we can't un, we can't un, undo the past. Yeah. Anyway, okay. uh, yeah, that's what's. Uh, I've heard that said oftentimes. In another way, when there's martyrs in Palestine, especially, people say, "Well, we just continue on." You know, no no number of martyrs is going to uh, change change the identity of the Palestinian people, and with that identity, they're not going to allow themselves to be <laughs> to be erased, you know, and well, to be expelled, yeah. which is the intention of the current. <laughs> Whatever it is, you know the gang of fascists. They're not even a government anymore. I'm sure they don't even have a majority in the in the Knesset anymore either. And if there were to be an election, you know, Netanyahu would be gone. Like two thirds, you know, want him to be gone. So, but he's still there, and he's still clinging on onto the power with his uh, his fascist uh, colleagues. So, what's going to happen there? Wow. Well, they refuse to leave Gaza. They have a ceasefire that is being proposed. It's not going to include the withdrawal of the Zionist military from Gaza. They want to keep the military inside the Gaza, away from populated areas, whatever that means, you know, like five meters away, you know, if, 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 you know, uh, 15, 15 yards away. <laughs> and they'll say that they're remove themselves from populated areas for sure. Ugh. What's um what's happening with Hamas and um Saudi Arabia? I I, I and I'm sorry, but for between uh on Allah and Saudi Arabia, I have a statement here which is 
very critical um, from Ansar Allah on July 7th, which they're very critical of, of, of the Saudi regime. What What is going oh. on? Oh, that sounds nice. Finally, you know, an Arab country criticizing Saudi Arabia. Finally. I don't know. I didn't hear about that. But uh, Ansar Allah in Yemen, ooh, they're so magnificent. You know, even though they're under duress, even though they, there's even famine conditions in the country, they're still uh, on the front line of the struggle against uh, against the uh, imperialist powers, you know, against all the powers that have uh, tried to uh, bomb them into submission. And they are not submitted. And so they are... Uh, stopping all the traffic of uh, this most important strait in the world going into the Red Sea. Wow. You know, this is uh, well, um, the Suez Canal, you know, is shut down, basically. Uh, yeah, wow, wow. Uh, uh, so, uh, yeah. And, and Elat, the port of Elat uh, from uh, the Zionist state is shut down now, which was a, a commercial port and they have nothing to commerce with anymore because no boats are coming down. So <clears throat> that's shut down, which means all the employment uh, uh, subsequent to that is shut down as well. Is real, you know, the Zionist economy is shut down right now. They're just keeping they're going they're running on fumes, you know, and and the subsidies, you know, from the from the United States. That's that's all they've got. That's it. No, uh, <clears throat> well, let's see. Germany is supplying them with thirty percent of of their armaments as well. Yeah. Germany is a big problem. Hmm. And now they want to pass a law saying that uh, the uh, the American Law of uh, Anti-Semitism Awareness Act. Huh. Well, would this be considered anti-Semitic? This is Yale University Press just published a book called The No State Solution from Professor Daniel Boy Boyarin. Okay. This comes from our Jewish Socialist Bund in the book that was published, The Federation of Palestinian and Hebrew Nations, which is described as a no-state solution in 2018. This is published last year. And it supports the Bund. Yeah. It's incredible. You know, like this is a wonderful book. It's magnificent. And it's rehabilitated, you know, it's a, it's, it's, rebuilt the Bund, you know, once this is gets read, you know, by all the younger generation, you know, in the Jewish Voice for Peace, and if not now and not in our name, they're going to well, say, oh, yeah, we're Bundists. We didn't know. <laughs> well, um, you mentioned, you mentioned uh, the need to spread that, and I, I just want to make, I want to share something. Um, something came to my mind this morning, actually. You know, we have a situation in Kenya right now. This isn't related to Palestine, but it is. Where the, the median age of the families is 21 years old. Mm. Think about it. Think about it. That's the median age of the country. Mm. It doesn't say much about lifespan. No, it doesn't. Mm. Mm -hmm. But because there's so many youth mm -hmm. and so many people who are willing to fight the families are able to, to have discussions about the struggle and about taking up the struggle at home in their families, among their friends. And the youth build solidarity in their teenage and young adult years in the streets and fighting for their rights, the doctors, the nurses. So what I'm saying to you, the point I want to make is it's the importance of having families and discussing things with your family. Because one of the problems we have, I think, in the Black nation right now is that we cannot, we don't know what's being discussed in families. No, we don't. We don't know that, we don't know what Black liberation is being discussed. We don't know what Palestine is being discussed. But if you have a young population, where many of them are in school and being and being um, educated, and when they go home, their parents are, you know, young too, and they're aware of these situations. You have a greater chance of awareness being spread at home. It's very important that parents spread 
the language of revolution and struggle at home. If you spread it at home, it won't be undone too easily. Don't don't wait for the organizer of, of the group or or the school teacher to do it for you because they the organizer might be underground or dead, and the teacher might might not be of the right state of mind to discuss it or or scared. I just want to mention that to people that the importance of the importance of having families that are about revolution or about the struggle. Look, all all the pictures we see of our martyrs from Palestine. These some are older, some are in their sixties, most from their twenties and thirties. They're wearing they're wearing Adidas soccer uniforms. They go in a battle without even a flag jacket. Mm. Without I me, mean, the Israelis go in. The Israelis go, Israelis go in with tanks, with armored personnel carriers, with um, bulletproof vests. I, I saw a picture of from um, from the Palestinian resistance. A few weeks of video. The brother came out the tunnels. He didn't even have shoes on, man. <laughs> I know, wow. but he didn't have shoes on, bro. I was like, damn. Look at yeah. that brother. Look at that brother. Look at that brother right there. He didn't even have shoes on. He's fighting for his freedom for his people. I yeah. I, I know what to say. Yeah. Yeah. He, he came out the tunnel shoeless. Shoe carry carried out an attack against um I think against a tank, um and oh maybe they were using some mortars, shooting mm -hmm. some mortars. It's it's just incredible the heroism, and the valiance that we see. And a lot of times it's because they're young, not because, and because they they believe in the cause of of freedom and equality and justice and liberation for the Palestinian people. They firmly believe in that, but they don't have to me. They don't care about paying bills. The hell with the bill. Their bill to pay is, is the, to pay the bill for freedom. I just want to encourage any of our viewers, if you have kids, if you don't have kids, what are you doing? I have a question. I do question. Why are you not having children? Any children? That's me. Not this program. And if you have children, are you teaching them about revolution at home? Mm -hmm. Are you, are you are you showing them the light? Because if you do it at home, it's hard, it's easier for us to make a revolution. And these Palestinian youth that we see in these videos, their parents had to say, "It's okay, son. It's okay, daughter. Go and fight for the revolution." And and if and if they martyr them, they accept the martyrdom as part of the cause of of other Palestinian other Palestinian cause. That's one thing that motivates me to continue to, to continue to support these causes in in Africa, in Latin America, in Palestine, because of the motivation and the, the courage of of our young fighters. Mm -hmm. To me, it's just it's 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 what keeps it going. Anyway, I just want to say that to you. Mm -hmm. There's a another aspect of the uh, uh, German state uh, reparations for having destroyed the the families of my mother mm. and father. Um, and that is, you know, the uh, Germany made an agreement with the, the Zionist state, you know, to provide for the uh, reparations for the Holocaust survivors who are living in Israel. Okay. So they give the government, they give the, the money to the government and the government is supposed to provide the social services for the Holocaust survivors. Right. But as it turns out, a third of the Holocaust survivors are living in poverty. Why? Because uh, a lot of the Holocaust survivors come from Russia. And because they were Soviets, they were not given the subsidy by the government. They were not given, you oh, know, the benefits of the of the, of the German reparation program. Because because they were Soviets, basically, but, uh, you know, because they didn't come from the West and they didn't come immediately after the Holocaust. You know, <laughs> use any sort of an excuse, you know. To... Any excuse. Yeah. Any yeah. excuse to steal the money, you know? Yeah. And stealing the money from Holocaust survivors. Yes, to well. steal the money from from the victims. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. They, will, yeah. They, will, they will do the same Given their opportunity to give reparation to black people here, I bet you 
if it ever happens, which I don't think it will ever happen short of revolution, but if it ever happens and you owe the IRS some money, they'll take that freaking money before they give you a dime. They, they, they always do that. I mean, it's just the corruption and lack of morality among the oppressors is always baffling. It's always there's always there's always an example that that uh, one can find. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. I'm sorry to hear that. Mm. Boy, well. Now, although it's all depressing to think about uh, Gaza, nonetheless, it's uh, amazing that the struggle continues there, that Hamas has been able to resist and continue to resist and is even recruiting to increase its resistance against the Zionist occupation. They are, in effect, even in terms of military logic, you know, are winning the struggle because they are preventing the occupying power from winning the struggle. Right. That alone is a victory. Yes. Yeah. What is the situation now as far as um, the Zionist, the Israeli government assault on the ground? They're taking a pause. I, 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 I've, I've been curious if I keep up with the news in the Palestinian resistance. But I'm 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 confused as to what's really going on on the ground, within within um, the West Bank and in Gaza as far as Israeli assaults. We hear about a massacre here and a massacre there, and that's sad to say. We hear about a massacre mm -hmm. every you know every other day. But are, are are they on the same kind of offensive, or what what's what's occurring? Are are they planning to attack Lebanon, or just what's going on? Well, one, they're they're running out of ammunition because uh, the, the the war material supplied by the United States has been cut by half, which is supposed to make Biden look good. But, you know, it doesn't mean anything. They continue on. And they seem to be running out of targets, you know, because they're only killing about 25 Palestinians a day now instead of 125. But in the West Bank... That's where troops have been deployed because they expect an uprising in the West Bank. And in fact, they have battles going on there in which uh, Zionist soldiers are, are suffering casualties in Janine, in Nablus, Tukaram, all in the north there that previously, you know, had been under, under lock and key. Mm -hmm. And each uh, municipality, you know, was basically a ghetto. That's where I lived myself. And whenever they wanted, they would just shut down, you know, the checkpoint at Hawara, the principal entry point, you know, to the city of Nablus. And then from the the, uh, the mountain village uh, uh, up above, you know, Kufar Khalil, you know, I, I look down and I can see the long line of vehicles, you know, just sitting there waiting, you know, for hours because they had shut down Hawara for no reason. Just to exert their control and to carry out, it's like a... Uh, a, um, a psychological assault, you know, to, to convince the Palestinians that they are losers, that they and they will always be losers, and therefore they should just give up and leave the country. That's what you know they're trying to do by such means, and uh, it can't work, you know, because no other country will accept Palestinian refugees. You know, Jordan is filled; it's got two million Palestinian refugees already from forty-eight, sixty-seven. Same thing that goes, you know, for Lebanon, which doesn't even provide citizenship for the Palestinian refugees there. And the other countries around, you know, are also uh, overpopulated with Palestinian refugees. And uh, with new Palestinian refugees coming in, that would increase the, the balance of power of the Palestinian refugees, and then they could uh, take care of any reactionary government there as well. So those reactionary governments are not willing to undertake that risk so they don't want palestinian refugees same thing with egypt egypt is afraid of palestinian refugees huh. you know the first thing palestinian uh, refugees would do you know would be to join with the other revolutionary forces and get rid of the cz government military government military coup government so west bank that's, that's, that, yeah, that's that's interesting uh real that's that statement right there Regarding this, um, the government of Israel, that I mean of, of Egypt, mm -hmm. a lot of controversy 
about what they're actually up to, who they really, or what, who, who they stand, what they stand for. Mm -hmm. uh, there, there is, there's quite a bit of, um, it's quite a bit of concern about this actually, um, because, um, they appear to be pro 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 US. They appear to be a tool in the hands of the United States. Mm -hmm. They don't appear to be siding with the Palestinians at all, and from what I can see. What's your take on that? Palestinian Authority? No, on the um on the um <clears throat> The the Israeli the um the Egyptian government. Oh, oh. I'm not aware that they have a government. <laughs> All they have is a dictator. Oh, well, that's yeah, that's about I, it. I'm you know, sorry, I, bro. I forgot. I, thank yeah. you. Man. Yeah. They, they, they murdered that brother who was from the for they jailed him at jailed him after, after the coup, right? Yeah. Never, yeah. And they killed him. In, they killed him in jail. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Sure did. He, mm -hmm. he he's an African brother from the um the um um brotherhood Arab bro um Muslim the, Brotherhood, you know, more Muslim yeah. Brotherhood, that's right, yeah, that's yeah. right. That's right. And yeah. um um locked them up. Yeah. But the, they made uh, uh yeah, Morsi made some similar uh, errors, you know, which they thought that the Muslim Brotherhood, you know, was had taken power in Egypt and they would stay so for the next 500 years or so. They were into uh, uh, mono party, you know, rule as well. So, uh, you know, that's how Sisi got away with it, you know, because um, the population was disenchanted with the Muslim uh, Brotherhood government. And so the uh, military took advantage of that, you know, to carry out a coup in which they you know, raise the hopes of uh, something better, but uh, ended up, you know, making something worse. That's Egypt. What about the, what about the recent story from the, in the New York Times about the um, torture of the prisoners? There's a story that was released this week on the Palestinian Resistance Network news um Telegram channel, and they were talking about the um, they were talking about the, the story in the New York Times. It was a horrible story. It's a, it's a horrible story. It's nothing, even it's it's so horrible. It's even discuss it makes you shiver because the, the kind of atrocities that are being committed. They're mm -hmm. able to um, they're able to visit this this. Camp somewhere oh, in yeah. somewhere in in Israel, where yeah. all of the where many of the civilian and some of the Pal some of the Palestinian resistance fighters are are taken, and the horror that the Palestinians talked about, and the level of brutality carried out by the Israelis. Was nothing short of the uh, Abu Ghraib videos and images mm -hmm. that came out of the Iraq War, mm -hmm. the United States against people of Iraq. Mm -hmm. It was such sadism mm -hmm. and barbarism. I, said, I, I, I didn't want to mention the things that I read. It was, it, mm -hmm. it would shake you to the core mm -hmm. of your soul mm -hmm. that anybody was. Um, had this kind of terror and inflicted upon them mm -hmm. the kind of uh, savagery um carried out on the name of putting some of imprisoning someone mm -hmm. it, it was just a it was a torture chamber and i would i i i don't encourage people to read it but i do encourage you to read it i mm -hmm. encourage you to find it sit down maybe you, you might eat a towel nearby if you start crying mm -hmm. Or start vomiting out of all the disgusting um, details. But it was a it, it's a bad article. It's gotten very little coverage. If I wasn't reading the Palestinian resistance websites, I wouldn't know about it. 
Mm. It's not being covered in the United States, and it came out of, of the New York Times. Mm. That's why I just want to alert people to it. To, mm. that, um, what's happening to the, our to our Palestinian brothers in, in the jails mm -hmm. is nothing short of a war crimes um, uh, in, in encyclopedia. Mm -hmm. <coughs> That's all I got. Mm -hmm. It's a very, 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 very bad situation. Not mm -hmm. good. It's, it's as if uh, the Zionists, you know, uh, knowing of the um, uh, of the subjugation of the Jewish people in Europe and how they were treated there, take all these things and adopt it for themselves to use against the Palestinians. I, you know, it, it's not logical. You know, you would think that they would be opposed to that which, that torture to which they were subjected to themselves. But no, the Zionists have, have turned it upside down, you know. And, and instead of, you know, opposing uh, that which they have been subjected to, no, they adopt it for themselves and say, well, if it was done to us, then we can do it to others. You know, that legitimatizes it. It's a precedent, yeah, no, a historical it precedent. Or, yeah, yeah. yeah, it doesn't. Yeah. It doesn't legitimize anything. That's yeah. that's that's so, that's what's so, that's what's so sad about it. Yeah. It doesn't legitimize yeah. anything. Okay, so that that means that, um, it, I mean, yeah, it's, it doesn't legitimize anything. That's that's what's so horrible about those statements. You know, with the, they have yeah. someone. Speaking to have someone speak, use that kind of logic. Yeah. There's something wrong. There's something wrong with you, bro. You you, you can't. Okay. The um the ends don't justify the means, man. Yeah, it's and, not rational. It's in, it's a kind of a collective insanity that they right. have there, endemic a, uh, it, psychosis. It, it, it's, yeah. And it's yeah. and it's not it's not a good thing. I'm trying to show you this image without showing you this New York Times thing, but I'm gonna show it to you anyway. Mm -hmm. I want people to, to, to take a to take a look at the the front page of this of this article. I want them to think about. Oh, what good! I, I haven't seen it myself. I'd like to yeah, see this. I'm, I'm, I, 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 I got it right here. While here. you're looking, I'll, I got it right here. Oh, I'm here it is. More. And this is you know this oh, is what yes. the front cover. Yeah, okay. And I'm, I'm gonna try to go down a little. Try to see if I can get this to go down a little bit. It's kind of hard, but um, you know, this is um story about you know. Inside the base where Israel detained thousands of Gazans, that Patrick Kingsley and Bilal Shaber, New York oh. Times, and uh -huh. I would highly recommend our viewers, our listeners, like I said, find this article. Can Patrick you just Kingsley. scroll scroll the article down so that uh, I, I can't. people it's can just, read it by stopping screen afterwards? Uh, I, this, yeah, I, because I, I'm trying to because I don't have a paid subscription oh but on the side here you know there's a bar there's a bar here on the side that's this that one, one yeah yeah can this, scroll this that it. down okay yeah 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 and this is you know this is the article here and it is you know uh ahmed who is not uh, available to uh talk with us at this given moment you know he'll be available later right uh he was tortured in prison he was imprisoned when he was 18 years old and the type of uh, torture that, that standard standard torture that they use on all um palestinians i think all palestinian men i don't know about the palestinian women i haven't heard from them this but, shot a lot of people here here uh, I, I oh yes here it is okay they Inside take they the they have a little st stool that they attach the prisoner to so okay so the the legs are attached to one side of the of the stool and then the person is bent over backwards and the arms are attached to the other side of the stool and they're in this dress condition and left like that for hours uh, yeah that's one of the tortures you know that ahmed was subjected to and that is, and, uh, you know, and this all, is paid all, for by the United States. Yeah, and then you know that's supposed to convince the Palestinians to become informers. That's what yeah. they're trying to that's, do. That's with the that. whole thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So this is a, this is a very, the very um, 
it's a very explicit article. They interview Israeli soldiers without giving their names. Mm. But they give them to the Palestinians, and the Palestinian stories are nothing to write home to mom about, I'll tell you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so... No. I can tell you uh, from my own experience what kind of torture is used, even on internationals like me. Uh, I was arrested, not arrested even, I was detained by the Israel military when we were walking through the Jordan River Valley one time towards the uh, border with Jordan and towards a uh, Zionist colony there. And uh, when we got to the highway, after walking through the, um, through the, you know, the land, we were on the land and uh, we come down to this highway and all of a sudden, you know, all sorts of, you know, military vehicles appear. And they say to us, you know, you can't come here, you know, like it's public road and all that, you know, but on Palestinian land, you can't come here, you know, this is closed uh, area. And they either use an excuse, it's a closed military area, there's nothing built up on it, or it's, you know, settlement land that they say was annexed, you know, what hasn't even been annexed. So, so they told us to go back, you know, we refused. We didn't even have, you know, like a banner or anything, you know, just um, Abu Nasser was carrying a Palestine flag, that was it. And then they told us to leave. Okay, so we got our cars ready, you know, we all got in, you know, we were driving away. And in the car in which I was, there was a Jeep, military Jeep following us. Okay. So w one of the persons, uh, okay, uh, was uh, feeling ill. So we stopped when we saw an ambulance. The Jeep stops as well, comes out and says, why did you stop? You can't stop, you know, and, and you're under arrest. You're under detention now. So he said, go sit down. So we sat down on the guardrail. Then uh, another Jeep comes. And then this officer comes who knew me from before, you know, from another demonstration in which I got away. And he starts shouting, you know, them, you know, get that guy, get that guy. So, you know, we, we all got arrested together with two uh, women from Europe, France and Spain, and uh, five Palestinians. So they, first of all, you know, they put tie, uh, tie uh, straps, you know, on our hands, you know, okay, so we're, we're like this, tight, like this. Then they put... Uh, blindfolds on everybody and they didn't put blindfolds on me you know because they knew that i was jewish <laughs> they couldn't do it <laughs> so i said to them how come i don't get a blindfold you know like everybody else and they said oh, okay and they put a blindfold on me <laughs> so then they put us into uh some some vehicle you know who knows and then we get taken to a military base not to a police station no no no, no. they don't want the police because the police would have let us go because there's nothing to charge us with. So we get put into military base, uh, put into a room uh, where the only thing in the room, you know, was just benches around the wall. And so we're sitting there, you know, and the soldiers would be coming in, you know, one after the other, you know, like uh, one shift after another. And then night hit and it gets cold there at nighttime, you know, so they leave the door open so that we're freezing. And we still have, you know, the tie ties, uh, on and the blindfolds, no meals, and no place to lie down. Uh, certainly no mattress, no <laughs> no covers, you know, and no nothing, basically. And then all night long, the soldiers are coming in, you know, shouting at each other, you know, talking, you know, in Hebrew to keep us awake. And then 26 hours later, we finally, you know, get to meet, you know, a police. And then we tell them the story, you know, like, uh, we were on, on, a, on a walk, you know, through the Jordan River Valley, and then we got uh, taken, you know, and we didn't, you know, we weren't even in the protest. It was just, you know, like just a walk to say that this is Palestinian land without even saying so, just, but you know, de facto. And they said, okay, you know, go, you know, you're, you're released, there's no charge. And that's, that's, you know, how the military, you know, treats people there compared to the police even. And then what's worse is the border police, the Green Berets, Oh, yeah. Green Berets, then, though. Hmm. Yeah, they call them Green Berets. And then well, there's green a new Berets. formation called the uh, the National Guard. The National Guard, yeah. So the minister, Ben Svir, has his own militia now, fascist militia. I saw him handing out automatic rifles to uh, his supporters and shaking their hand. And then away they go with the gun. You know, they can do anything they want with that gun. And now the settlers have guns. 
the squatters, you know, they come and they harass, you know, Palestinian villagers. So they'll leave the village and go into a city, a uh, de facto ghetto. And then the land is taken over by the, uh, by the squatters. They've just, you know, uh, the government has just um, allocated resources for 5,500 additional housing units in the West Bank. And they're starting to uh, legalize a lot of illegal settlements, so-called. 5,500, yeah. huh? Yeah, yeah. At this time, you know, it's not just, you know, once a year that they do this. You know, they do it on a regular basis that they keep on, a, you know, filing funds. 5,500, know, that's a lot of homes. Yeah, and then they, you know, they subsidize all the, uh, the white Ashkenazi designers to go and live there. And the Jewish Arabs, you know, they, they're they just, you know, uh, the lower class of the working class there again. It's just an apartheid, double apartheid. Yeah. Oh, one At one demonstration at the beginning of this uh, current campaign, <clears throat> I was speaking to a journalist and um, from the radio station here, which is a Zionist radio station. They didn't know who I was. So they're talking, and I, I say to them, you know, that Israel is a white supremacist regime for two reasons. One, because it uh, alienates the Palestinians, and two, because it suppresses the uh, Jewish Arabs. And he said, what? <laughs> the journalist shouted, no, what? That, but... <laughs> and I, not, so I took that as an opportunity to repeat it, you know, very calm voice. Israel is a white supremacist regime for two reasons. One, because of the Palestinians and two, because of the Jewish Arabs. And like he said, and then he didn't say anything. He just cut me off. You know, like I was disconnected yep, right goodbye. there and then. You're gone. And then, <laughs> and then the recording I heard afterwards, you know, like he started apologizing to the listeners, you know, for having let me speak. In the first oh, place. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. You had that. That required an explanation. How did this fanatic and lunatic get <laughs> on the radio to speak to someone? Everybody, we apologize. Mm -hmm. You know, he we, he obviously was on drugs. You know, <laughs> you know I know he, he's some kind of, uh, if say he's not, a, if say he's not a, uh, if he's not in the insane asylum, and we, they just <laughs> let him out. He obviously has, he has taken a lot of drugs. I mean, we, yeah, yeah, that's what they yeah, do. Yeah, yeah. And worse yeah. than that, worse than that, what they say about me, what they try to say about me, is that I'm not Jewish. And one lady, you know, drove by, was shouting at me, "You're not Jewish." I researched it, you know, in front of a bunch of people, and so I said, uh, "Oh yeah." So I opened up my coat, and I happened to be wearing my tzitzis, you know, this prayer thing, you know, with with little strands on it, you know, and I was wearing that. So I opened that, showed her that, and and I, sh I shouted her back in Yiddish. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was, yeah, well, I, I think that kind of changed. She, that kind she of just drove that. off, you know, that was it. <laughs> that was it. No, no more. No, it's just, no more. Yeah. Get rid of him. Let's go. Turn it off. Yeah. Turn, yeah. off turn it off right now. <laughs> you want to take yeah. me on? I'm here. You know, come on. <laughs> you know, like uh, in whatever language, you know, English, French, or Yiddish, you know. <laughs> whatever, you hardly anybody's... Whatever, whatever language it is, shut the, shut the blank up. And, yeah. you know, I mean, so seriously. Shut up and get him out. Listen. Get him off camera and um yeah. and put that tape away somewhere. You know. Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry you had that experience. I'm sorry you had to go through that, man. It's incredible. You know, they've been so so conditioned. You know that they don't even want to learn. They don't want to know anything new. Oh. You know, it's incredible. You know, it's uh, such a debasement of a culture. You know, because the Jewish culture used to be so open and dynamic yeah, and it's, debating it's insane, and, and you know insane. anything goes you know no, man, now oof. no man that's those those i think those i think those days i hope are not permanently gone but no. what you see now is a combination of of narcissism e, e, elitism arrogance uh, super, uh ethnic and white superiority just it's just not good bro yeah, it's not good, man. I mean, you know, just just think that you would used to see as positive characteristics in our Jewish brothers and sisters is being used mm. to be to make them enemies of uh, humanity, and it's just not right. Yeah, I'm, I, I'm I'm sorry to see it. It's just not good to see. Oh yeah, and, and it no, goes right not, into the family good. as well. You know, my 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 cousin uh, is married with an Israeli, and okay. uh, when I was uh, 
I was hit by an exploding uh, gas grenade at one time oh. in a demonstration at the Ofer prison when we were demonstrating against the imprisonment of a social worker by the name of Mustafa. And uh, I was, yeah, okay, I admit, I was harassing the the guards on the other side, you know, like, I, well, not insulting them, you know, just saying things like, are you proud, you know, while filming, you know, filming them, are you proud of what you're doing? And they don't answer, you know, like, if you're proud, you know, of what you're doing, you know, what's your name? What's your name? You know, tell us your name if you're so proud of what you're doing. No mm -hmm. name, <laughs> no pride. <laughs> they open up the gate and threw a gas grenade at me and the top, you know, exploded off and this metal thing, you know, at the top, hit me in the chest and I had it all on, on video. It's all on video on YouTube right now. So I was speaking with this cousin, my cousin's wife. I wouldn't call her even my cousin anymore. And I told her about this and she said, Oh, you were in, you were in the wrong place. That's the reason why I got hit with this gas grenade. You were in the okay. wrong place. And I said, what do you mean? I was in the wrong place. I was standing with a journalist, you know, like I'm a journalist. I was doing a video. You know, how could I be in the wrong place, you know? Because you were. <laughs> because yeah. you were. That's the only reason they can give to justify what happened to you, bro. They couldn't yeah. say, man, you're, you're a victim of brutality. You're a victim of terrorism. You're a victim of authoritarianism. You're a victim because... Nah. Oh, no, 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 no. You were in the wrong be, place. Couldn't be. Couldn't be. No. Always you're in the wrong place, you know? <laughs> yeah, you're just in the wrong like, place. All your fault. It's like these, <laughs> these police videos that LAPD puts up. Those of you who are listening, LAPD is the police department in, in California. And they put out videos on officer-involved shootings. They put a video out. They, they have a program dedicated to explain why somebody was shot. Hmm. And every in every instance, but a few, the, the, the ju justification, well, the officer had to do something. No, yeah. they did. In most instances, there are a few where they don't have any option. I hate to say yeah. that. But 99% of the options, once they show up, it's going to be, a, it's going to end up in disaster. So just yeah. like that, well, what happened? Well, we showed up and well, sometime, I'm not saying don't call the police. You think, I'm not saying that's a whole other conversation, a whole other show. Like you said, well, they happened to be barricaded in the house and we had to get them out. You did? Hmm. Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm, just, I'm like, you're not going to just say it. There's always an excuse given to justify the outcome. That's what I'm hmm. saying. When it comes yeah. to oppression. There's always an excuse given by the oppressor or yeah. or or their um their um supporters yeah. or their backers to justify the oppression. That's all I'm saying. And I'm sorry, yeah. I'm sure it happened to you. That's, yeah. not, that's nonsense. That's terrible. Yeah. yeah. So <clears throat> I said to her, you sound like a soldier. <laughs> you know, like you're taking the soldier side. And she said, yeah, yeah, she was a soldier. And I said, oh, yeah, you were a soldier? Yeah. yeah you were, I thought you were, you know, like a, 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 you know, a dissident. You told me before you were a dissident, you know, but you you voluntarily went into the military. Uh-huh. Oh, okay. So, so she was a soldier. So I said, and what did you do? When you were a soldier, I asked her. <laughs> and, you know, when uh, at the end of their duty, all the soldiers are told to lie and to say that all they did, you know, while they were doing their military service was folding parachutes. And that's the lie she gave me. She was folding are parachutes. You are you serious? Yeah, folding parachutes. That's all she did. You know, like, what How many for? Years? <laughs> like, How many years? even that, you know, even that lie, you know, like, doesn't make any sense, you know, like, Holding year, parachutes for, for what? You know, like <laughs> to what? One to drop, year, you know, years. soldiers into Egypt or what? You know, like doesn't make any sense. Three years service, four years service. Oh, women do like two and a half years, and men do two and three quarter years now. They made a concession. They took a couple of months off of the service, you know, to make people yeah. happy. Wasn't that nice of them? Yeah. No. And then now I see that. Yeah. I'm so, I'm so. They want to do the same to the Haredim now. You know, they want the ultra orthodox. They want to, uh, in, they want to uh, forcibly, you know, put careful, them into the military. Yeah, I would be very careful giving up the, uh, the ultra orthodox a gun, hmm. not because they're bad <laughs> people. But they actually may turn the gun against them. Yeah, for sure. You know, in for their sure. no, they may turn the gun against against their officers. They're, they're, they consider know, themselves they're... to be Palestinians, not Israelis. Yeah. They don't want to even be there. I mean, they don't want to be in the military from from jump, yeah. just from the risk. Just they, they don't even want to be there. So, do you want to give them a gun? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe put them in some position where they look at a screen or something, and, 
do a traffic control. Yeah. I'm just saying, yeah. if, if, I, if, if, if I have a population in my country that don't want to be in the military anyway, and I'm giving them a gun and training, OMG, yeah. anything yeah. can happen. <laughs> okay. No, you, you just don't know. What, That's all I have to say about that, man. I yeah. mean, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, these cats who get press ganged into Ukraine. I'm sure you've seen the videos, right? Oh, they yeah. find them on the street, they beat them up and make them go right to the front line. You yeah. want to give him a gun? Yeah. Wait a minute, you just beat the man up and made him join the military. You better uh -huh. be careful with that man there. Yeah. He may he may show that gun around you or just surrender and give all the give all the information to them run to the Russians. Yeah. So people who people who who, who, who don't want to be in our forces, maybe just should let them not be or give them some position they can't do nothing because yeah. you know <laughs> anyway I, as i say i'll be very careful with them people with a gun i don't know man yeah yeah give them a tank give them a tank oh <laughs> yeah that's what i uh you know I, I i find ironic you know when i see the military operating there and they have some ethiopian soldiers and they're trying to train the ethiopian soldiers to be aggressive you know so they so they give them, you know, like tell them, you know, here's a gun to shoot, you know, gas, gas canister. And you do it this way, you know, like, and so now here's, here's the, the gas canister gun, you know, here, take it and shoot it to the Palestinians, you know, like I saw them training this guy and the guy, you know, like is just playing along, you know, pretending, you know, that, you know, he doesn't know how to hold the gun, you know, but, you know, they force him to do it and they force him to shoot it. And this guy I've been speaking to before, and it's on video too. You know, he was out in front there, you know, at the uh, Hawara checkpoint, and we were demonstrating against. And so, uh, you know, he's close enough. So I start talking to him and I say, you know, I'm Jewish and you're Jewish, aren't you? And he said, yeah, well, I'm a Holocaust, second generation Holocaust survivor. And I'm telling you that this is, you're not protecting the Jewish people by doing this. You know, you're just protecting, you know, the, the you, know, this, you know, the Zionism or whatever. You know, and uh, so he started listening. And then he got a call from his officer way back saying, come back here, you know, because he saw they saw him talking with me. So he's going back. And that's when I shouted at him, don't be a slave to the Zionists. And then that, and then next thing, you know, I see him doing, you know, is being trained, you know, to operate this gas canister gun. That's yeah. the Ethiopians, you know, that's how they're treated. Yeah, I've, I heard, I've heard some things that are very negative about how Ethiopians are treated in Israel in general and in the armed forces. I've heard some negative things. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't surprise me if they're given a the triple standard, not double standard, but triple standard, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry that they want to be there. I'm sorry. I'm sorry you want to be there, bro. Why you want to leave Ethiopia to become this fucked up, see my, this fucked up place? Yeah. Why do you want to be here, man? Come on, bro. You could be, be in Ethiopia, you got beautiful women, beautiful men. Mm -hmm. Ancestors are there. You got all the, the all the ocean, everything going on for you, man. History, everything. Why you want to be in this this thinking place? Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about like Israel, not the United States. It's Israel. Mm -hmm. I really question. I mean, I never had a chance to do. It. I'm sure they would give me an answer, mm -hmm. you know. And then you see videos of this, of the, of the video of, of 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 Ethiopian woman just degrading the Palestinians, just talking mm -hmm. shit about them. Mm -hmm. I mean, they yeah. kill them all. I'm not gonna slap that girl. I'm sorry. Really? You're wrong. Oh. No, sister, you're wrong saying that now. Yeah. You're wrong. Yeah. You're wrong about saying that shit about Palestinians. Shut your shut your mouth. Mm -hmm. be quiet. Yeah. Yes, be quiet because you're saying things that shouldn't be said. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyway. Those uh those Israelis who who can leave are leaving, you know, like about five hundred thousand have left. Oh yes. Yeah. yeah. I've seen they're going, they're going where they're going to Thailand. They get they're getting out of there until yeah. Until they, they get so they can come back and it's the way they want it to be, you yeah. never know what's going to happen. Yeah, a lot are leaving permanently. You know, like the 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 settlers in the north there, like about seventy thousand to one hundred and twenty five thousand, have left the uh, settlements there permanently, and the settlements are being blasted away. You know, by the rockets from Hezbollah. <laughs> They're not going back. You know, and then also you know the squatters, you know, in the villages around Gaza, they don't feel like going back either. Well, man, you know, I mean, the 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 what they've created there with that with the Israeli state is like it's like these Fort Fort Cannon, Fort Collins, 
Fort Sumter, Fort Knox, all these mm -hmm. forts that were forward operating positions. That's how the U.S. Army set up its stuff to mm -hmm. conquer the American landscape. Mm -hmm. It creates such terror, such hostility, such bad blood mm -hmm. that even amongst the people who they entice to live there, it's not really a place anybody could feel too, too comfortable if you have any sense of more real morality of, you know, mm -hmm. it's just, it's just, there's, it's just a bad, this a state based on, especially Israel, it's, and it's aggressive, violent nature. You could be killed, a settler could die anytime or be forced to kill somebody. Mm -hmm. or, or we put in a situation where other settlers decide it's time, it's time to go on a, 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 a pogrom against Palestinian and your husband and son, whether they want to do it or not, or gang or press gang in and committing mass murder. Mm -hmm. It's just not a good, it's it's terrible, man. It's, it's not good, man. I'm sorry. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's just not good, man. Mm -hmm. It's not a good place to be. So, it's, yeah. it, I mean, just, but if you don't want to, if you're leaving because the Palestinians may win and might come for your head, maybe it's time for you to get out right now. Yeah. Well, about 17% of the Jewish Israeli population have dual citizenship. You know, they have a passport for another country. They can leave and stay away. But the rest can't. That's the big difference, you know, between this case and let's say Algeria, you know, with the Collins, uh, 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 Colon in French, uh, the colonists can return to the, um, to the um, Im imperial center to France because they're French citizens. But in this case, uh, in the United States, nowhere are they going to accept uh, 7.2 million Jewish Israelis as refugees. So <clears throat> that's why, you know, the character, the constitutional solution to the conflict there is uh, not the same as uh, any regular national liberation struggle. Yes, agreed. And so that's why I put uh, put it all together after discussing it with the Palestinians in Nablus into the book, The Federation of Palestinian and Hebrew Nations. The Hebrew nation exists. Israel is a state that doesn't need to exist. But the Hebrew nation exists. Okay, well, they can have their national cultural autonomy, you know, uh, according to the uh, Jewish Bundes principle, and govern themselves, but not to govern the Palestinians at the same time. And the Palestinians would have their own institutions as well. And then they, then they would form federal council to decide on allocation of, of common resources. No problem. Security, police force, no problem. No military standing force. No need for it. You know, <laughs> who's going to invade? Nobody. So they don't need a military. So, you know, it's, it can be resolved. The only impediment to the res resolution of the problem is ideology. And this ideology is Zionism, which is not Judaism which is not a Jewish identity. It is a imposed, assimilated identity imposed by Protestant Christianity, which is trying to tell the Jewish people that their homeland is only in Palestine, that they don't have a homeland anywhere else and they should leave because everywhere else is supposed to be a Christian nation state. That sums up the conditions uh, that we are presented with here. And uh, I think that we're making some headway because if... If this book can be published by Yale University Press, oh, I have to provide the proof, you know, like it's just too unbelievable, you know, to, to think that this could happen here. Here it is. Here. Yeah, we can see. There you go. Yeah. yeah pull, pull back right a little there. bit. And then on the other side is the Jewish Bundes symbol uh, graphic from 1918 calling on, uh, you know, in, in the election campaign, that was a Jewish Bundes poster asking people to vote for the Jewish Bund. And the Jewish Bund, of course, got many, many more votes than the Zionist parties. And in fact, it was the, the most popular party uh, of all the Jewish political parties in the municipal elections there at the time. And the Zionists, you know, they were just like 8% of the Jewish population. But the 8%, you know, had, had the, the resources to carry out the campaign of of getting recognition for Zionism and then occupying Palestine. So we're faced with a very, very difficult problem there. And uh, 
and Gaza and Hamas and the other resistance groups are leading uh, a, a uh, sustained military campaign that is making headway against the Zionist military. Plus, sure. plus engendering an international support campaign that is revolutionary. You know, when they chant, you know, Intifada's revolution, worldwide revolution, they're talking about worldwide revolution now. This is the vanguard of a worldwide revolution. You know, we haven't seen this, you know, before. This is unprecedented. Sure yeah. yeah. And, and it's a good thing we're seeing it. Yeah. And... Uh, <laughs> In North America, it's still difficult. You know, the United States wants to pass the Anti-Semitism Awareness Act based upon the uh, definition of uh, anti-Semitism that is pro-Zionist. Well, that has to be cleared up. And only the Bund, Jewish Bund can clear that up, you know. But the uh, Jewish uh, protest organizations don't know how to cope with that yet. They're going to have to sort of uh, become much more aware of what the Bund has to offer and its writings. You know, that all of this is written down, you know, if, Maybe a lot of it hasn't been translated from Yiddish, but the most important article, anti-Zionist article from the Jewish Bund from the 30s is contained in the book, The Federation of Palestinian and Hebrew Nations, in translation, of course, and with the original Yiddish. So it's there. It's all the, you know, the political theory is ready and waiting, you know, to be picked up. And I'm sure that they will, especially now with this new book coming out, which has given reason, you know, for everyone to recognize the Jewish Bund as the first Jewish anti-Zionist organization. Now everybody's going to know. Before, you know, the Zionists were so successful in their censorship, all the Hebrew educational system had nothing to say about the Jewish Bund. I met a lot of Jewish people at the Vigil who didn't know what, what the Jewish Bund was. They didn't know that there was a Jewish anti-Zionist movement. It's, it's incredible, you know, the debasement, you know, of culture that has been pushed by the Zionists, you know, so much, creating this artificial culture, you know, that has no content to it, you know, just a bunch of slogans and lies and myths and hatred. It's such a debasement of a culture, you know, it's, it's really pathetic. I agree. Yeah. I agree. I agree. Well, uh, not to become more depressed Let's uh, end the session for today, and uh, okay. I'm very pleased uh, that we can go on for as long as we need to speak and not be limited by a 40-minute deadline, and uh, and so we continue. And uh, when Ahmed is uh, available to come and speak, I'll send you a link so that uh, you can jump in, and then we can talk with Ahmed as well to get his latest take on what the uh, prospects are for successful revolutionary struggles, which is what we're after, not only in, in Gaza and Palestine, but worldwide. And it's happening. I want to thank you for letting me speak to you today. And I uh, just want to let our listeners and viewers know, please share this, uh, this video. Please share our channel. And every week, I hope to bring you more updates from news I receive on Telegram channels and in, and in the NATO and non-NATO news media about what has occurred in the week regarding the struggle of the Palestinian resistance for for victory over over Israel. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Another week to go. Another week.